Paul Plushkel will give the next presentation, Competitive Advantages of Software in the Cloud. Paul Plushkel is the Executive Vice President of Strategy and Cloud Services at GenBand. Paul Plushkel is responsible for developing and implementing corporate strategy as well as leading business development for the company. Hello, my name is Paul Plushkel. I'm the Executive Vice President of Strategy and Cloud Services for GenBand and the founder of Candy. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I started many companies. Um, most recently, I was the founder of Spigot, became the global leader in innovation and idea management, and sold to MindJet about a year ago. Communications are changing and getting more complex every day. Everyone has more ways to communicate and more streams to keep up with them. And today, with Candy, we're allowing enterprises to build communications that are more integrated and immediate, built right into the way customers and employees are working. So no longer having to get out of one application into another but simply extending the use of your application with the, using real-time communication. You know, user experience is everything, and I think software has really brought it to light, but I'm somewhat of an aficionado for um, home theater, and the remote control systems year over year had gotten incredibly complex with so many buttons that you would need a magnifying glass and really bright lights to be able to read them. And then Apple came out with this truly unique remote with just three small buttons that you could do everything with. And then the evolution of the Nest and the thermometer and it being intelligent and helping us, um, you know, control our electricity costs while being simple and beautiful at the same time. I also have three kids in college, so you can imagine the giant sucking sound coming from my wallet or bank account. And I learned that Bank of America was actually a great software company. They have built incredible software to allow you to transfer money easily from one child's account to another or from your account to theirs. So user experiences mean everything. And a good foundation has three main pillars, and I really like this. This was done by Eric Schmidt and Jonathan Rosenberg um, with How Google Works presentation. And it comes out that you start out with creating a superior product based on unique technical insights. And I think Steve Jobs was a master of this also. So we, we, if we just simply ask people what they'd like, they're doing incremental approaches of what they know. When you have a fundamental um, change agent or an expert, they're able to reimagine the entire process. And in our case, with Candy, we reimagine the entire communication process. And then you optimize for growth, not revenue. If something's really good, you'll get a lot of revenue. If you really just try to run a business on finding revenue, you probably won't be too successful. And then one of my favorite rules, and I've been following this for a long time, is it's important to know the competition, but don't try to play feature creep and catch up with the competition. I see so many companies struggle with this all the time where they're simply saying, hey, our competitors do X, Y, Z, we need to do X, Y, Z, when what you really need to do is change the fundamental process of how something does it to become more usable, more user-friendly, and, and to help improve a business. So these are some of the key pillars, and, and I love the fact that Eric Schmidt highlighted them recently. I don't know how many of you booked your own airline tickets, but um, you know, I, I was just, I was flabbergasted the other day. I went on Near Canada a site, and I looked, I felt like I was on an ASCII dumb terminal back in the uh, dating myself here back in college in the late 80s, early 90s. And going through these menu options was tedious, long, and very difficult to navigate. In fact, there were all these different classes of service without explanations of what the difference in class was. So it was a bit of a guessing game, too. And I do something like I go to Virgin America or even the New Southwest flight, and look how intuitive and simple it is and friendly it is and it's accommodating. It makes me want to provide or give them more of my services. So user experiences. What used to be done by groups or travel agents, you know, 20 years ago, certainly not the way today, is done through applications and software today in a very simplistic, meaningful approach, which is all based on experience. Why is this important? Well, um, Eric, Benedict uh, Evans actually came up with this, and he was talking about, you know, how mobile is kind of taking over the world, and he was equating it to Mark Andreessen's column on um, software is eating the world, both from Andreessen and Horowitz. And this is amazing to me. The unconnected are shrinking. We talk all the time about the difference between digital natives and digital immigrants. And a digital native is somebody who's grown up with the technology, and it's really just like an extension of their hand. Um, a digital immigrant is learning new ways to do things that might be slightly uncomfortable until they realize the benefit. And um, what we found out is the reason the transformation is happening is because people no longer have to read user manuals. Um, if products are built simply and meaningfully, um, people can accommodate and grow them. But this amazing statistic here is that the digital immigrants are going away and digital natives are here to stay. And it's, it's a fantastic trend for the future and the evolution of communication, software, and mobile. 
taking to play the Internet of Things. Um, the Internet of Things is going to um, open up new ways uh, that, that we see things that never existed before. So, you know, you start with some wearable clothing. Yeah, it was kind of cool, the Fitbit, and, you know, keep track of my steps and calorie counters and, um, you know, Google Ads and other pieces. But what about when everything's truly connected? What about when your car is really autonomous and able to go through and figure out the best way to never get to a red light? How about the new applications that allow you to find parking spots in cities um, based on meters, talking to other meters, and letting people know um, where, where actually parking spaces exist for you to go park? In a recent study, it was estimated that 30% of all city traffic is just simply people trying to find a parking place. Pretty staggering and amazing. So when you get to things like building the Internet of Things, you need reference models. And Cisco came out with, um, Jim Green, CTO, actually from Data Analytics Business Group at Cisco, came out with a, a reference model, which, which I enjoyed going through, to show the various areas where you're going to be connected to the Internet of Things all the way to what's meaningful in the collaboration and, and, and processes and business processes, actual workflows or work streams, and how you do business in contextual use cases. A long time ago, we used to think about things called waterfall, and it seems like it was so distant ago, where you would simply have this long-range plan of figuring out where you want to go with your product and service and build it, and we just absolutely hope that people would come and buy the product. And that's no longer the way. And, and I look at kind of the Agile manifesto as the value-based manifesto, and, and how do we really do things better with storyboards and creation? And four, four simple points to that are, are really key, that individuals and interactions Take precedent over processes and tools. Simple software over comprehensive documents. Um, it's no longer the software that has the most features that wins. It's the software that's the most useful that wins and the easiest and simplest. We'll tend to go back and use stuff that we like. Um, our kids are great. The digital natives are fantastic at this. There's so many apps available to them, but the apps that get really big, really fast, and really viral are the ones like Instagram that are easy and functional and serve a really good purpose for, for an outcome. Customer collaboration over contract negotiation. Isn't it great to partner with your customer and provide them meaningful updates and benefits over fighting about you know, what you're going to hopefully do for 12 months before you're able to actually start? And then responding to interactive changes over long-term plans. Um, we should never change the fundamental strategy that we're doing. You know, that, that's the foundation of the business that we've chosen to be in or how we want to compete or win. But what we do need to do is incremental or, or changes and interactive changes as their pivot points within the business, within the industry, within the customer requirements. And Agile really lets you to do this by, by following sprint as opposed to this long waterfall process. So I think that what we see is technology, development, and what a customer needs all coming and converging at the same time. And why is this happening? Again, going back to Benedict Evans in, in his presentation, for the first time, tech is selling to everyone. As I mentioned, I'm a serial entrepreneur, raised um, you know, approximately $100 million in my days for various companies. And one of the key pieces when you're in a meeting with somebody trying to raise money is, what is the market size and who is the buyer? And, and it's a very loaded question. Um, you really have to understand your market and have a believable market for somebody to invest in it because they want a 5, 10, 20x return on their money. And to do that, the market size has to be substantial to the investment that you're giving. Well, this is fantastic now that tech is selling to everyone. I'm not pigeonholed. Um, a lot of times if you watch Shark Tank, you'll find out, for example, they'll say, oh, this product's only good for, for men or women, or this product's only good in one region. Um, the products that are, they like to invest in are good for everyone. Well, tech is now selling to everybody, which opens tremendous market opportunities. In fact, there's usually more technology today in our pocket than there, there is you know, in our office. So, this leads me to saying how you build it and how you use it becomes a single experience or outcome. We now build an agile for simplicity, functionality, and, and meeting market demands and interaction. How you use it is for simple, simplicity and benefit, right? Does it solve my need? Does it accomplish what I want to do? Is it simple? Is it fun to use? So they're no longer two different strands. These things are very tied together. The outcome experience is as important as when you use it as how you build it. And it's something that I think a lot of companies are finding out the hard way, and the agile companies and the newer companies are finding out um, very simply. I mean, you look at the size of what's happened in the marketplace and how many customers they have rivals that of two or three of the major, most large, the largest operators combined.
And again, this is not here we go again. If you go back, I remember people saying, well, you know, we're, we're going to everything being browser-based, so that means um, it's just the way it was with, like, dumb terminals going back to a mainframe. It's funny. It's absolutely not the case. This is, this is evolutionary, um, and, and it, it's not repetitive. If you look at, again, I'm going to go back to Benedict Evans' um, piece, there's 625 times more transistors in a phone than a 1995 Pentium. Apple sold 25 times more CPU transistors than were in all PCs on the earth in 1995. In our, in our pocket um, is a supercomputer. So even though we're doing web-based um, web applications and, and a lot of times just you know, native applications in iOS and Android, um, the, the equipment in our pocket is amazing and is able to do amazing things that, that never before were able. So when you look at, there was a great article that the, the iPhone um, or an Android device, how many different things it has replaced. So it's not mainframes all over again. We're talking about serious computing power in, within our grasp at all times. And nobody really understands the cloud, and, and that's perfect. That the, the cloud shouldn't be an obstruction. The, the cloud should just be a, a way of delivery for us. So the end user experience is what matters. Um, a great clip from, from a recent movie here explains what people really think about the cloud. It went up to the cloud! And you can't get it down from the cloud? Nobody understands the cloud. It's a mystery! And then again, it's down to power to the people, right? Um, just keep, keep mentioning that the, the benefits with cloud is that it's the experience, and people don't need to install plugins, and you know, they, they simply know how to use an app and download. Apps are simple and don't require documentation or training videos. Or, you know, I, I remember when Microsoft Office first came out, there were a lot of companies making a living off of just doing online training or, or reading manuals or, or these yellow books for dummies. You don't see that anymore because things are just consumable and usable right out of the box from everything, from your Nest controller to your, to your um, Apple TV remote. So it becomes now power to the people. It's not power to the IT guy that's making the budget decisions. People are going to use the device they want and the applications they need. We see it happening every day. If, if work gives you 15 logins and you're really not able to be functional, you're going to bring your own software in your own device and get things done you need. And, um, you know, it used to be that you'd go through a travel agent. Then it was that you'd have to go through an online piece to get your travel done. And now we all have on our phone these incredible apps. What's more efficient? What's better? The people will decide, and the movement is the power to the people. No longer these hierarchical needs of, of corporations. More importantly, uh, the creatives are, are now leading the way. Which, which I couldn't be more excited about. So in closing, what, what I'm saying is we need to reimagine the entire communication process. We need to reimagine how everything works based on cloud consumption subscription economy. And um, you know, personal communications are becoming more user-friendly every day, but then why is it that my workplace communication seems to be getting more complex? Why do I have to log into five or six or ten different platforms with unique IDs, even if I have a single sign-on, to look for various documents or get certain support. Why aren't all my applications integrated in my workflow into the way that I, I do things naturally? And really, that's what we're doing with Candy. We're putting the real-time communication pieces in context right into workflows. I don't need a vertical unified communication stack any longer. I don't need to, to have to make my calls from a plastic phone. I don't need to have to uh, dial up um, uh, uh, you know, a WebEx or an Adobe Connect to be able to get people online to solve a problem. If, if I'm working in my CRM application, then I should just be able to work within that to get the real-time communications I need. SAP is at the forefront of it. In fact, we've partnered with SAP, and, and they're actually offering in their CRM capabilities that th their ability to have drag people into conversations, transcode um, you know, calls, to be able to share and collaborate on the screen. So what we're finding out is the way the digital natives work today with their applications for their own personal use are now coming to the enterprise and really just in time because um, what we don't need are more platforms and, and standalone systems or stovepipe types of equations. What we do need are things um, that the enterprise can use to, to be more creative, to increase profits, to increase, uh, you know, just, just overall happiness. I mean, if, if things at work become easy to use and simple like in your home life, then work becomes more enjoyable. And let's face it, we spend a lot of time there. Maybe not there anymore, which is great, but we're, we're working during a lot of the hours of the day.
So the future of communication is really about maximizing communication. And to do that, we need to be in context, and we need to be relevant, and we need to be you know, cloud ready. So the audience here today is, you know, understands this. What we need, need to do is spread this. And the way we spread this is by simply offering simple, um, game-changing outcomes that are easy and fun to use for the masses. I thank you for your time and look forward to catching up with you soon. You can reach me at paul at genband.com. Thank you.